is part of our nature as humans and the nature of many of Allah's creatures that we all need each other no matter how strongly one may believe he needs no one he will come to realize one day that he could not have survived without the help of others but I can study by myself or even play by myself if I wanted ah but when you study you will need a book, a lamp, or a desk, and all were made for you by someone else. Even when you play alone, do you not use something made by others? Actually, I've never thought about it like that before. We all depend on each other. That's why we all need to respect each other and appreciate what others do to help us have a better life. I cannot imagine how life would be without my family and friends. Can you imagine how badly we needed Allah's prophets and messengers? Or can you imagine how much we need the Holy Quran? Without the Quran and Allah's messengers, we wouldn't have known how to worship Allah. Well said, Hanan. Well said, my dear. This is one important example of our need for each other. Even though our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was sent to us more than 1,400 years ago, we still need his sunnah and guidance. What about the rest of Allah's creations? Do they need each other like us humans? Of course. Many of them need others to feed on as meals. Um, 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 um. <laughs> Others help each other despite the difference of their species. But in the world of humans and animals, the best example of help in daily life is the cooperation between the members of family, especially between a husband and a wife, as in our story today. 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم First we say اللهم صلي وسلم على الحبيب محمد اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك على حبيبي محمد The prophet of adults and children Allah's messenger to Arabs and all nations He brought us the Holy Quran telling us the truest of tales and uncovering news from the world of the unknown and times long past. Today's story from the book Little Giants is a story in which the author imagined the condition of two rare young bears in one of the Holy Quran stories. It's titled The Last Passenger. In one of Earth's beautiful forests, a group of old panda bears gathered around two youthful panda bears to celebrate their marriage. This marriage was not like any previous one for their kind or even for any of other of Allah's creations on Earth. This marriage was for the survival and existence of their species. Through the years, these bears were on the verge of extinction. Many of them fell prey to other vicious beasts, and others were victims of humans. Your marriage is the only hope for the survival of our kind. You have to take care of each other and your children. You are the only two left. You are our only hope. Yes. We went through many hardships to find you two. We traveled long distances to bring you two together. We did our best to take care of you after your parents were killed. Young panda bear Sadr was very little when his parents were killed. And so was Aran when her parents were killed. Sadr's parents were killed by a vicious tiger. He survived because his parents hid him inside a tree trunk. The tiger tried to kill him too, but his claws could not reach Sadr. After giving up, the tiger left Sadr and dragged his parents away, leaving baby Sadr alone and scared. After a short while, the older bears came and rescued Sadr. Aran's parents were killed by human hunters for the beauty and warmth of their fur. They left her alone because her young fur was of no use to them. She remained still until the old bears came and rescued her. Sadr and Aran lived in the care of the old bears for years until they grew up and became ready for marriage. We'll do our best to protect and care for each other and our children. And I promise I will do my best to help my husband carry out his responsibilities and protect our kids. This is what we are hoping for. You two are the last of our kind. If you don't protect yourselves and your children, it will be the end of our species. Beware! Beware! Hide! What? What is it? Huh? What's scaring you? Humans! There are humans coming! How far are they? Not too far. They're coming in our direction. We must hide. No, we should protect Sadr and Aran first. Sadr, Aran, run away and don't forget our advice. We won't leave you. We will stay to protect you. No, go and take care of yourselves. Go! Go on, go, quickly. Don't hesitate. Go, you are our only hope. Sadr and Aran had no choice but to follow the bear's wishes. They took off running into the forest to escape the humans, while the older bears stayed in place to fight the humans, ready to die for the sake of protecting the only hope of their kind, Sadr and Aran. The older bears were ready for the confrontation. They lined up in formation, prepared. 
Suddenly, the hunters emerged from behind the trees to stand face to face with the older bears. They stared at the bears, then they started whispering to each other. Then they began to discuss something, and then they advanced towards the bears, but they did not attack. Rather, with great care and caution, they avoided the bears and walked around them. The panda bears were puzzled by the hunters' actions, but they did not want to give them the chance to catch up with Sadr and Aran. The panda bears tried to stand in the hunters' way to prevent them from passing, but the hunters started to laugh and play with the bears. The hunters knew that panda bears were peaceful and harmless. After much effort, the hunters were finally able to maneuver around the old panda bears and took off searching for the young bears, leaving the old bears tired, exhausted, and puzzled. Sadr and Aran did not know what was happening behind them. They ran with all the power and speed they had. They knew very well they were the only hope for the panda bears' survival on earth and that if the hunters caught them, it would be their demise and the end of their kind. Where are we going, Sadr? I don't know, but we must find a safe place to hide. Come on, hurry up, come on! Sadr! Because Sadr and Aran were in a rush, Sadr did not realize he was running on the edge of a cliff. He stumbled and fell, rolling for a distance. Aran hurried, following him. She rushed, climbing downhill after Sadr to help him. They only had each other. Uh, uh, oh, Sadr, Sadr, uh, are you okay? I don't think so, Aran. Oh. Don't worry. Don't move. We'll stay here until you get better. It's not safe here. We need to find another place to hide. Oh, oh. Why are these humans chasing us? Oh, oh. What? Oh, why don't Why don't they just leave us alone? Oh. Huh? I think the humans are getting closer. From a distance. Both heard the hunters' voices getting closer. They did not know what to do. Sadr was injured and incapable of moving. Their location was exposed and easy to see. If they stayed in place, both would be captured. Without waiting, Aran took off quickly, leaving Sadr in place. Aran! No! Sadr understood well what his wife intended to do. She wanted to sacrifice her life to save him. He knew she wanted to attract the hunters away from him, and that was what she did. Aran first ran towards the hunters' voices. Look! There! That's what we are looking for! The moment Aran made sure the hunters saw her, she changed her direction and ran far from Sadr's location. The hunters chased her as she led them away from Sadr. Aran! No! No, Aran! In spite of Sadr's pain, he gathered his strength, got up with difficulty, and with all the power he got, headed after them. He paid no concern to the ferocious animals around him or to the danger in his path. But what surprised him was that he saw many snakes, beasts, and vultures, but none of them attacked or even tried to harm him. It was like everyone was minding their own business, or as if they were not hungry. Sadr did not stop to inquire. 
Rather, he felt more confident. The only danger left between him and his wife was the hunters. Suddenly, Dadar found himself opposite a big tiger. It stood tall, strong, and gazing at the sky. When the tiger felt Sadr's presence, he turned his head slowly and stared at Sadr. Uh, please, please don't hurt me. Please, I just want to rescue my wife. Please, don't hurt me. The tiger did not answer, but he turned his head towards the sky, gazing at it again. Sadr was surprised at the tiger's behavior. He did not expect the tiger to ignore him. Sadr did not care to stay to find out what was going on. It was his chance to escape. He turned slowly and with extreme caution he started to walk away from the tiger. But after taking a few steps, Sadr stopped as if he remembered something. He turned facing the tiger. He looked at him, stared at him, and started thinking. Then he found himself saying, Why did you kill my parents? Huh? What? I remember you. You were the one that killed my parents when I was young. Why did you kill them? Don't you remember me? My mother hid me in a tree trunk. You tried to kill me too, but you couldn't reach me. Remember? Don't you remember? Without waiting, the tiger jumped at Sadr. But the tiger did not jump at Sadr to kill him. Instead, he dropped in front of him on the ground. <laughs> Please forgive me. <laughs> I beg you. This is my last chance. Do anything. <laughs> kill me. Punish me. <laughs> I want to repent. I want to repent. <laughs> Sadr was shocked at what was happening. He did not know what to do. He could not find any explanation for what the tiger did. But he did not want to stay to find out. Instead, he hurried away to catch up with his wife. Night cast its shadow. The sky darkened and was decorated with magical night stars. Sadr kept making his way without hesitation or slowing down. He did not stop, not for a second even though he was hearing strange talk. They are only hunting couples from every kind. This is our last chance. We must repent. We were a group, but they chose the strongest couple. What do you mean a big ship? Explain to me first. What's a ship? What matters now is that everybody repents. We already accept Allah's will and resolve. We already believe in no God but Him. So why be scared? For starters, I don't want to live anywhere Allah is not being worshipped. Sadr smelled fire. He felt a little fear, but hurried in its direction to see what was happening. When he came closer to its source, he found a small fire surrounded by many cages, each containing, from every species, a couple. Aran! Aran! Sadr! Sadr! Over here! Aran! Are you okay? Did they hurt you? No, Sadr! But go away! Go away! What? What are you saying, Aran? I'm telling you to go away! You're in danger! I'm in what? Ah! Before Sadr could understand what Aran was trying to tell him, ropes and nets hidden by the darkness, suddenly wrapped him up, and he was captured. Uh, uh, what is this? Uh, they caught me! Uh, Calm down, Sadr! Calm down! Uh, uh, no! No! I must get out of here! Uh, uh, uh. While Sadr was trying to escape the trap, Alhamdulillah, as we expected, he traced her scent. 
With this one, our mission is complete. We must hurry to the ship. The hunters put Sadr with his wife in the cage. But Sadr was very rowdy. Uh, leave us! Uh, set us free! Calm down, Sadr! Uh, no! No, I won't calm down! They want to kill us! Sadr, calm down! They didn't hurt me! No, I know they... That's because they wanted me to follow you! Haven't you seen the trap? Sadr! I did not expect this bear to be that violent. We must keep him isolated, or else he'll hurt the other one. Let me out of here! Let me go! Let go of my wife! What do you want from us? Because of Sadr's rowdiness and roughness, the hunters put him in a separate cage with plenty of food and water. They kept him away from the rest of the animals so he would not scare them. Then they headed off in a long convoy of animals, from each kind, a pair, a male and a female. But throughout the journey, Sadr would not calm down. Do you understand? Get me out! I said get me out and that means get me out! Days and nights passed. Do you think I'll stop resisting? The convoy kept going, climbing mountains and descending valleys. The hunters provided Sadr all the food and water he needed. But whenever they came closer to his cage, he turned wild and rowdy and tried to escape. They had no choice but to keep him in his cage, away from his wife, Aran. I they were afraid I won't give he would up. hurt her. I'm still strong. I won't let you kill me and my After wife. After several days. I won't let you kill me and my wife. I won't. Uh, huh? What's this? Sadr saw a big, huge structure. Many animals and creatures were climbing on it. From every kind, a couple. Hmm. How was your trip? Alhamdulillah, everything was fine. No animal troubled us, except for this mischievous bear. <laughs> it's okay. What's important is that no animal is left except for what you have. Come on, we have to hurry. We must lock up the ship. All the animals that came with Sadr got on board. No one was left except for him. Where is the last passenger? Right here. I don't understand why he is wild like this. Believe me, if there were another young bear, we wouldn't have brought this one. Let me go! Ah, leave me alone! Let my wife go! Leave us alone! Suddenly, black clouds clustered in the sky. Strong winds were gusting. Thunder roared and lightning lit up and rain started to pour. People hurried onto the big ship. They shut the doors and closed the windows. Everybody was frightened. With their breathing escalating and their hearts beating fast, they could not do anything but turn to Allah. The animals on the ship were all scared, but all were quiet, glorifying Allah in their own way, as if they knew that Allah would take care of them. As for Sadr, get me out of here! I want to see my wife! Sadr, when will you calm down? Didn't you notice all the other animals are calm except for you? What? Didn't you notice that the humans who captured us are treating us gently and kindly? Uh... Haven't um... you noticed that all the animals here are in pairs? But I... Would you please calm down and glorify Allah like everyone is? For the first time in days, Sadr felt calm and peaceful when he saw his wife next to him putting his mind at ease. And when he noticed for the first time 
that everybody around him was calm. He quieted down, relaxed, and settled. When the humans noticed his calmness, they let him out of the cage. Sadr walked out quietly and stood next to his wife, Aran. The raging waters lifted the ship. The waves and winds tossed the ship around, once taking it to the right and once to the left. The ship was incapable of anything but to submit to Allah's will. After several long days of storms, the rain stopped, the clouds cleared, and the winds settled. The water seeped into earth, and the sun of a new day came out. The ship settled on the ground, the windows and doors were opened, a fresh pure breeze of air blew gently as everybody breathed it in happily. All came out from the ship, every couple together. So, what now? I guess we have a new start. Excellent! Where do we start? I think we go back home. Then, back home we go. Sadr and Aran headed back home to start their new life. There were no more dangers threatening the survival of their kind, for the whole world had a new beginning. All right, now, which of you knows which prophet the story talks about? The story talks about Prophet Noah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Good job, Amr. Well done, my son. And whoever wants to learn more about Prophet Noah, alayhi salatu wa salam, they should read the Holy Quran and its explanation. Until prayer time comes, tell me about your school. How were your exams? Mm -hmm. Live our lives for a day to come We're deeds still who failed and who will overcome So do all you can to live by Allah's command And a little giant you will be And a little giant you will be parents and your days will turn bright be true to your friends and guide them only to do right earn the real treasure when you seek a last pleasure and a little giant you will be and a little giant you will be you don't have to be big to do a big deed you don't have to be